Well, are we on the edge of the last major war in human history? Jimmy Evans reveals the end time prophetic connection between the last days and our current headlines. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click on that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. An ancient prophecy unfolding in modern headlines. The world descending into chaos. A great deception masquerading as peace. As a new regime rises, a leader will usher in lawlessness, setting up the final chapter of human history. Welcome to the End Times. So are we in the beginning stages of the Gog-Magog war and are the pieces being moved into place for the final battle of Armageddon? Well, today with the help of our special guest, we'll look at how current conflicts might be connected to the end times. But first joining me around the table is my daughter in love, Susanna Lamb. Hello. Are you ready to hear about this? I'm so excited. I'm ready for Jesus to come, so. You know, we <laughs> we watched that um, documentary that was on Daystar Before the Wrath. called Before the Wrath. Mm. And one of the things that they that they talked about, and so many of these experts on, you know, and theologians on prophetic end times, they talked about the fact that preachers have many times stopped talking about yes. the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, I'm talking about yes. it. We're talking yes. about it here at Daystar all the time. But it's important to understand that Jesus is coming. Very, very soon. Sooner than anyone can expect. I love the part where they said, it's like a thief in the knife yeah. night for the world, but not for us, because we're waiting. We're yes. expecting it. All right. Dorothy yes. Newton, how are you? I am doing great. You're expecting a new grandbaby, is what you're yes. expecting. <laughs> yes, in November. Okay, so <laughs> so after November, let's <laughs> take <it up>. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Rachel Lamb Brown, how are you? I'm good. Can I just tell you all these Jimmy Evans episodes, all my friends are like, ooh, I just watched that one and I just watched that one. <laughs> Should we buy food and all the things? Oh, listen, so. my cousin from South Carolina called me and he was like, now, Joni, you know those Jimmy Evans shows you're doing? I said, my, he like owns a company, made all his employees sit down and watch it. Yay! Yes. How good! I love it. Wow. I love it. Smart man. So how are you, Cindy Johnston? I'm doing great. Are you ready to meet the Lord? <laughs> I am ready. This bride is ready. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, he is a renowned speaker and teacher on the topic of the end times and a fervent supporter of Israel. Please welcome one of our favorite people, Jimmy Evans, to the table. All right. Everybody, it's good to be here. We always have epic music for you to come in. I, know, I, love, I look dramatic. So Rachel has a funny story to tell you real quick. Okay. Okay, so me and Josh were at the mall the other day, and I was in the bathroom, and I came out, and Josh was talking to this lady, and I was just thinking, oh, man, what's going on? <laughs> she was so sweet. She said, I love watching you on Daystar. I love Joni Table Talk. And she goes, let me tell you, I love that guy on the end. And I was thinking to myself... <laughs> Who is, there's no guys on Journey Table Talk. It is all women. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, Jimmy Evans? She was like, yeah, him. He's the best. So you are now known as the guy on the end. I, I've always wanted to not be known as the guy on the, the end. Guy the guy on the end. Here you go. Yay. All right. Well, did you hear what I said? My cousin has a company and made all his employees sit down at lunch and watch wow. our Joni Table Talk wow. in times. Wow. And he's told them they need to get their life in order and get ready oh, yeah. to meet the Lord. Well, that's the entire purpose of prophecy mm -hmm. yeah. is yeah. to warn us. Yes. You know, it encourages saints and it warns sinners. Yeah. You know, a third of the Bible is about Bible prophecy. That's right. But they were, in the, this documentary we were talking about, you've seen it before the wrath that we showed oh, yeah, on very, Daystar. Very, good. very, very That good. just helps you to understand uh -huh. what a Galilean wedding is and what Jesus was saying in regards to the rapture of the church and why it fits perfectly like a puzzle mm -hmm. together. But a lot of these theologians were saying that preachers have stopped talking or they don't want to or they, you know, they don't know enough about it, but they've stopped talking about the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I grew up hearing that all the time. Yes. Well, you have to understand in, in the second century, Origen, who was a church father, he began to introduce Platonic dualism into theology, uh, which was a hor it, was, it was really a heresy. And he was rebuked by many of the early church fathers. But Pla Platonic dualism teaches that everything material is evil and everything uh, in the spirit realm is good. So Jesus couldn't come in the flesh 
because he would be evil. So the, the heresy of docetism was born, which means Jesus just appeared. He didn't come actually and die physically. He just appeared. And that's why John, the, John, John hated the docetist. And John said, what our eyes have seen and what our hands have handled. And so see, the, out of that came amillennialism. And the amillennial teaching is Jesus is not going to physically rule on the earth. He's going to rule through us. And so they begin to uh, take all of the scripture and allegorize it. Most denominations are all millennial. They do not believe that there'll be a physical millennium. They don't believe that Jesus will physically return. They don't hmm. believe in the tribulation. They don't, they don't believe, believe in the marriage wow. supper of the Lamb. They, they uh, allegorize all of it. My goodness. And so it's called supersessionism. And so wow. what they believe is the new covenant superseded all of God's covenants with Israel. You have to remember when they were, when they were making up all these doctrines, Israel had been annihilated. Uh, Jerusalem had been destroyed, a million Jews had been killed, the Romans took them, hot, the captive, the ones that, that lived. And so in the eyes of the world, Israel was cursed, they didn't exist anymore. And so they thought all of God's covenants with Israel had been superseded by the new covenant, and so now we are Israel, this is replacement theology. The official position of the Catholic Church is supersessionism, amillennialism. The official position of the Eastern Orthodox Church is amillennialism. This, the official position of most Christian denominations is amillennialism, so they don't talk about it because they don't believe in it. And so, the, and by the way, they believe that Satan was bound at the resurrection of Jesus. Does, does the world look to you like Satan oh. is bound right now? <laughs> and so they, they have all these cockamamie beliefs that mm -hmm. have nothing to do with the Bible. But understand, when you, when you begin to allegorize Scripture, Nothing means nothing, anything mm -hmm. means anything. You can make it say anything you want to say. So they don't want the world to end. They don't want the Antichrist to appear. They don't want the tribulation to come. So they just act like it's not going to. So that's the reason that many churches don't preach on the end times. They don't believe in it. Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to talk about end times. We're going to talk about what's going on, what's relevant right now. And of yeah. course, the Battle of Armageddon is maybe one of the places we can start, but I'm just going to turn you loose. Well, the the, th the reason I want to talk about this is it's happening. Now, we're, we're seeing today events in the world that these things are consequential, heavily consequential. So let's begin with, with Armageddon. Now, now, this is Joel 3, and this is God in the first person uh, speaking through Joel. For, for behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, now that was 1948, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now let me stop right here and say, God is the causal agent of Armageddon. The causal agent is not the devil, mm -hmm. and it's not the nations of the world. God says, I will gather all the nations mm -hmm. and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of Jehoshaphat is the valley between the Mount of Olives and the Temple Mount. This is the second coming, Zechariah 14, Revelation 19. And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they've scattered among the nations. They have divided up my land. Now, there's many reasons why we know that this is for today. When he says they've scattered them among the nations, the first time Israel was dispossessed, they only went to one nation, Babylon, mm -hmm. and they came back from Babylon. Mm -hmm. The second time they were dispossessed, they were scattered around the nations. And so it says, whom they've scattered among the nations, and they've divided up my land. Now, I've mentioned this book uh, on the show here before. I want to show it to you. This is William Coyne, this book, Eye to Eye. Facing the consequences of dividing Israel, he gives 20, 126 specific examples of when we tried to force Israel to give up land and natural disasters, historic mm -hmm. natural disasters that have happened in the United States. Last December, the Biden administration was trying to force Israel to stop building settlements in East Jerusalem, and there was a 200 mile, over 200 mile tornado that went through four states, did most of its damage in Kentucky, mm -hmm. it was it coincided with the Biden administration trying to force them to divide Jerusalem. And you gotta remember that that things really went awry for Trump after his son-in-law proposed dividing right. uh, Israel as well. Do you remember that? Michelle Bachman made that point yeah. very, very clear when we were on, on the show together. Absolutely, when, when you, he says, you've scattered them among the nations, you've divided up my land. So um, let me read this other scripture, I'll, I'll read you a couple of news articles here. This is Zechariah 12. The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel, thus says the Lord who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundations of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will be surely cut in pieces, though all the nations of the earth are gathered 
against it. So Armageddon is about Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Armageddon is about Israel, but Armageddon specifically is about Jerusalem. So here's an article from Israel 365 News. And the, the, the title of this is Biden's State Department Sidesteps Israel to Open Palestinian Consulate in Jerusalem. And so they're not going through Israel. They're disrespecting Israel. And they're going to open, this is, a, this is an embassy for the Palestinians in East Jerusalem. And so Biden, let me just read a little bit of this. It says, Biden has made the Palestinian Affairs Unit independent once again. If it has moved into its former location in Jerusalem, as Price said it would, it would operate once again as a de facto embassy to the Palestinian Authority from inside Jerusalem. The Israeli government strongly opposes the plan, saying that it could be understood. Israeli authorities propose that the U.S. reopen the mission in Ramallah or someplace else, de facto approval of a Palestinian capital in Jerusalem and a unilateral move by the Biden administration to implement that aspect of the two-state solution without the consent of the Israeli government. So right now, the Biden administration is saying, we don't care what you say, East Jerusalem belongs to the Palestinians. And so, but but the main thing, this is Armageddon. Mm. You're messing with Jerusalem. And then, and or then this book, this is talking about America, the consequences of dividing the land of Israel. And someone said one time, Israel is the center of the world to God. Jerusalem is the center of Israel and the Temple Mount is the center of Jerusalem. But the reason I'm talking about this, this is another note. So look at the fight that's brewing here. So they, they are, they, we have openly declared that we want a two-state solution. So as the United Nations, and I'll read that to you in just a minute, but we have openly declared a two-state solution. Here's what a two-state solution means. It means that you go to pre-1967 boundaries in Israel, which means 200,000 Jews lose their homes in East Jerusalem, and East Jerusalem goes to the Palestinians. It means 400,000 Jews lose their homes in Judea, Samaria, the West Bank, okay, and the Golan Heights goes back to wow. uh, Syria. So it's very, very serious. So that's pre-1967 boundaries, which Israel will never go for. That's why Armageddon is going to happen. But listen to this. This is Israel 365 News. The Jews of Judea, Samaria vow 10 new Jewish settlements during Biden's visit to Israel. Mm. So they are saying, come on over, President Biden. We're going to build settlements while you're here just to defy you. So this is a fight bring. I'll read one paragraph. Leaders of pro-Israel groups in Judea and Samaria announced their plans to establish 10 new communities while U.S. President Joe Biden is in Israel in July. The move would embarrass the coalition government of Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and according to some organizers, is intended as a retaliation for them not being able to build some other settlements in Judea and Samaria. So the, this is Judea and Samaria, is the, the area immediately surrounding Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And so Biden is saying, stop building your settlements. This is when the tornado happened back in December of 2021. He was telling them, stop building these settlements. There were 9,000 homes that were being built in, uh, in East Jerusalem because the Jews say East Jerusalem belongs to us. Right. It's ours. The Biden administration is saying, no, it doesn't. We do not recognize that as belonging to you. And we're going to put a consulate there and I'm going to visit there without the Israelis going with me. So this is a fight brewing and we all know biblically how it's going to end up. And let me read it to you here. This is the end of the story in Zechariah 14. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. I want you to notice again, the causal agent is God. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished. Half the city will go into captivity. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. In that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Then you will flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azal. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Thus my Lord God will come and all the saints with you. Now we come, we're we're with Jesus when he does this. Mm -hmm. And so this is Revelation 19. He comes and we're all with him there after the marriage supper of the Lamb. So this is Jerusalem and all the armies. God gathers all the armies of the world against him. Well, who are all all the armies of the world? It's the United Nations. This is the... This is the UN.org website. This is their official position concerning Israel. The position of the United Nations is defined by resolutions of the Security Council and General Assembly, as well as international law and bilateral agreements. The two-state solution remains the only path to ensuring that Palestinians and Israelis can both realize their legitimate aspirations living side by side in peace and security based on the 1967 borders and with Jerusalem as the capital of both states. Crazy. This is the official position that war is coming. Why do you think it's coming to a head right now, though? Because this has been 
the debate for years and years and years. I mean, they keep saying, oh, it needs to be a two-state solution, but obviously it hasn't happened, and we've, they've tried to do that, and it obviously hasn't worked. Right, well, and is the Ukraine and Russia involved mm -hmm. in anything we're talking about right now? Well, uh, Russia, I believe, so the Ezekiel 38, let's just get into that. Ezekiel 38, this is a prophecy against a man. Okay, his name is Gog. Okay. And Ezekiel 38, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, lead you out with all your army, horses, and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, the great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, that's Iran, Ethiopia, uh, that's modern day Sudan, Libya, it all with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of its troops, the house of Togarma, that's all Turkey, from the far north and its troops, many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years, that's the last days, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate, they were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. And again, we know this is our day because they were brought out of the nations, not just Babylon, all the nations. So this is a, this is a prophecy against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, Russia, Moscow, and Tobolsk. Mm. This is what it's talking about. And so this man, he's the prince of, of, of this area, but he also controls all these nations, mm -hmm. all of these allied nations with him. And it says, I want you to prophesy against him now. Today, the question is, of course, Rosh is Russia, you know, Gog and Magog, that's all the Russian area up in there. So the question is, is there a leader in Russia today that's kind of maniacal and someone that God would hate and someone that's threatening nuclear war mm -hmm. with everyone who bats an eye at him? Is, is, is Vladimir Putin? There might be somebody right now that fits that description. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he might just. Yeah. Well, we now have a person in Russia that could be Gog. And it says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put hooks in your jaw and I'm going to drag you down to the mountains of Israel. Okay, so this is a provocation. A hook was a donkey hook. When you owned a stubborn animal and it wouldn't do what you wanted to do, you just put a hook in its jaw and drug it around. Mm -hmm. So here's what God is saying. This is not your decision. Okay, remember, the causal agent of Armageddon is God. I'm going to gather you all there. Right. The causal agent of Gog and Magog is God. Mm -hmm. God is going to put hooks in their jaws and provoke them. He's going to provoke Gog and bring him down with all of the people he controls. Now, now first of all, the, all of these nations right now are all allied and they all hate Israel. Okay, and Russia controls all of them. Mm -hmm. So Iran, the, the, the provocateur of all this is Iran, not Russia. Okay. So uh, Iran is, has a nuclear program right now. They have been censured by the International Atomic Energy Agency because of non-compliance. In response to that censuring that happened last week, they have disconnected their cameras on their nuclear sites. So now the, I, I, the, the International Atomic Energy Agency, they're saying we can't monitor them any longer. Wow. So we're pretty sure they have nuclear yeah. capability or close to it. Well, last summer, Benny Gantz, who's the defense minister of Israel, said they were three weeks away, which they weren't. Okay, I think they're just trying to kind of get that. Well, now we know from the uh, IAEA that they are there. They're, they're saying, we can't keep them from crossing the line. This is critical. The time is critical. Well, so they, Israel just had chariots of fire, which was a month-long massive military drill of every department of their military, a month long. Yeah. And they practiced bombing Iran and defending their borders when they got finished. Okay, this is a massive drill. Wow. And so why on earth would Israel, by the way, yesterday, Israel bombed the Damascus airport, destroyed their runways, their tower, and all the cargo that had come in from Iran. Because Iran is flying bombs in to the Damascus airport. Israel's been bombing Iran for the last several years. Mm -hmm. And so, but Russia, Iran, Turkey, and Syria are all sitting on Israel's northern border right now. And, that, and I think you mentioned to me that Syria had um, had put a lot of troops on the Israeli border while all this was going on with the Ukraine, and a lot of people didn't know that movement was going on. Yeah, the, it's been a massive uh, move, military move. And so that's right. And of course now, you know, Russia's conscri conscripting soldiers from the Middle East to come up and fight in Ukraine, because mm -hmm. a lot of the Russians don't want to fight. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is, this is a massive thing. So you... Israel's going to bomb Iran. They're, they just finished this massive exercise. They have to bomb Iran. Because if they don't, Iran is going to bomb them with the nuclear 
mom that they promised to do forever. And see, this is what the world doesn't get. It's, it's the worldview that, that political leaders just don't understand. The Iranians have a, a worldview or they have an eschatology, they have an end times belief. Mm -hmm. And they believe that Allah has called them to destroy Israel and usher in the end times. Okay, so they have to destroy Israel. So no one's gonna stop them, that's the bottom line. And all of, all of and this- And it's not the people, because there's a lot of good people there, there. Yeah, a lot of precious Iranian people. It's the leaders. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember, it is the Islamic State of Iran. So they're an Islamic State. Mm -hmm. And the politicians don't run Iran, the religious leaders do. So they're not gonna stop. And so because of that, Israel is going to bomb Iran. Wow. Now let me say this. So people have asked me when I believe the Gog and Magog war, will be, first of all, I believe it'll be very soon. So it, it says in uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, it will take seven months to bury the dead after the Gog and Magog war. Mm. There will be massive death among the Muslims, among those in the Russians, the people that invade. And it will take seven years to clean up the debris. Mm -hmm. So I, now this is just my personal belief. I believe that that has to happen sometime around the rapture because you, you only have seven years then. It's the only time you have seven years left. It, I don't believe that we're gonna be cleaning up debris during the millennium, but maybe we would, I don't know. And so I believe it will happen, I, I, and this is again my personal belief, I believe the Gog and Magog war will happen, the rapture will occur around the same time, and that's gonna open the door for the Antichrist to make a peace agreement with Israel. Mm -hmm. And so he will ride in on the heels of that. Now it could be that the Gog and Magog war happens just after the rapture, because you have to remember, the uh, tribulation begins in Revelation 6. And the first thing that happens when the first seal is broken is the Antichrist, the rider on the white horse. Mm -hmm. And he has a bow and he takes away peace from the earth. That's the, that's the Antichrist posing as Christ, but he's coming to take away peace. The second horse comes out, the rider on the red horse, and peace is taken from the earth. Mm -hmm. The third horse comes out and it takes a day's wage to buy a quart of wheat or three quarts of barley. The next horse comes out, which is the pale horse, and a quarter of mankind dies. Mm -hmm. So you have the Antichrist, the peace treaty, you have peace that leaves the earth. Then you have famine. Look at the Ukraine right now. Mm -hmm. War causes famine. Then you have mass death. So it could be it happens right afterwards. But here's, here's the interesting thing. So I believe that some year the rapture will happen on Rosh Hashanah. The, there, have been, there are seven feasts of Israel. We know that they're a prophetic grid of the future because Jesus died during the feast of Passover. He was buried during the feast of unleavened bread. He was resurrected during the feast of first fruits. And Pentecost happened, which was last weekend. It happened on Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost. So the first four feasts have been literally fulfilled. So we have three more feasts, the Fall Feast. The next one is Rosh Hashanah, and then there is the Day of Atonement, mm -hmm. and then there's the Feast of Tabernacles. Three more feasts are fulfilled. Now this is, again, my, I believe. I believe that Rosh Hashanah is the rapture. Okay, the trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets. Day of Atonement is the second coming. Okay, mm -hmm. that's when Jesus comes and Armageddon and all these, you know. That's hit. after the seven years. That's after the seven years. And then the, the uh, Feast of Tabernacles is eternity with God. Mm -hmm. It's the seventh feast on the seventh month that lasts for seven days. Seven, 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 everything's fulfilled. All of the, the Jewish names for Rosh Hashanah point to the fact it's the rapture. So what I'm seeing right now is this, and Rachel, you, you said, why now? It doesn't have to happen this year, and I'm not predicting that, but here's what I'm saying is, things are very, very bad. Mm -hmm. We have a civil war in America, we just don't have any guns going on. And we're on. supposed mm -hmm. to know the seasons and times. That's, we're absolutely. I mean, no yeah. man knows the hour. First Thessalonians 5 says, that day should not overtake you, brethren. Mm -hmm. You're not of the darkness, right. you're of the light. Yes. And so we, we, have, we have scripture as a light that shines in darkness. And, we have and, we, and we're gonna continue to occupy until he comes, yes. no matter what happens, this year, next year, we're, we're light, Three years we're salt, now. and it says that he who now restrains will do so till he's taken out of the way. We're gonna restrain sin, we're gonna restrain abortion, we're gonna restrain divorce, we're gonna restrain as much as we can yes. until we're taken out of the way. But I never thought that I would see uh, things happening today. Within the last two years, could you have ever no, Joan, imagined in no. your life in the what last, is going on? In the last 20 years, and then it keeps getting, the, the birth pains are getting harder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see, what I believe is, War's, war's about to happen in Israel, the, in, in, unless something happens. But see, this, the, it was the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action that they had been trying to do for the last seven years, and that is, they, it, it just fell apart. Mm -hmm. And so there's no solution. In fact, Jesus said there'll be perplexity among nations or distress of nations with perplexity, and that's what we see today. The world is just a mess, and there's no answer for it. So, you know, can you just kind of go through, for people watching Jimmy, um, kind of go through the sequence of where we are, 
So you're saying we could see the war of Gog and Magog, the rapture of the church, the seven-year tribulation, right. the second coming, right. mm -hmm. and of course the marriage supper of the Lamb would take yeah, place during the seven years that's right. tribulation, um, and then the millennial. The millennium. Mm -hmm. Is that pretty much? That's it. That there's, I mean, if Israel bombs Iran mm -hmm. today, the Gog and Magog war will happen almost immediately, and all the parties are gathered. So it's, it's an amazing time. So let's pray because I know there are people watching that you're not ready to meet the Lord. And there's, there's just such an earnestness that we all have that we share these things. Again, we're not setting dates. Jimmy said we don't know if it's going to happen this year, next year, or five years from now. But we want you to be ready. And no one will ever be able to say that we didn't talk about this on Daystar. Right. And we have tried to win as many people as we can to the Lord. Would you lead us in the sinner's prayer and we'll pray after you. And those of you watching, just repeat this after Jimmy, please, along with us. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. I open my heart to you. I invite you to come in. I invite you to come in. To be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. Give me the gift of eternal life. Give me the gift of eternal life. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power. Give me the power. To live for you. To live for you. And to change. And to change. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we are out of time, but I want you to be encouraged today. I know that we're talking about things like war and end times. That can be intense, but I want you to understand something. God is not surprised, he's not surprised by any of these events, and we've got it all in the Word of God. In fact, He has a plan and a purpose in these things, and He is working them all for the good of believers around the world. I've said this many times. John Paul Jackson said it to me a million times. Do you realize that you have been blessed with the opportunity of living in this season. God looked down and said, out of all eternity, I want you to be able to be born this time and live here. Can you be trusted with the information that we're sharing? And I've said this over and over, there are people all around you that don't know the Lord. This is the time to have that courage and boldness to just say, hey, you know, are you ready to meet the Lord? If you're watching today and maybe you're struggling with fear regarding the things we talked about, or maybe you're struggling with a certain situation going on in your life, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. Or maybe you just prayed that prayer with us, and I would love for you to share that with us and say, I prayed the prayer with Jimmy Evans and I want to be ready to meet the Lord. You can also go to daystar.com and share on there your prayer request or say, I prayed the prayer. Uh, we'll send you a little book entitled, Now What? And um, we'll send that to you free of charge. But I want to thank Jimmy for joining us. As always, you can find out more on his ministry as well as the other resources online at endtimes.com. And also be sure to check out Jimmy's upcoming Tipping Point Prophecy Conference a Saturday, September 17th. To register, visit conference.endtimes.com. And for a special discount, use End Times 20. And this is where you can learn a lot of information here, a lot of what we've talked about here on the table and more. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts about today's program. You can join the conversation online by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We'd love to hear how Table Talk has touched your life. I want to thank you for watching. I want you to tune in tomorrow. We're going to take on more of your end time questions. But if you pray that prayer, let us know about that. I want to tell you something. The best is yet to come. And let me tell you something, folks. Eternity is a long, long time. And we want to make sure that you are with us. I don't have any fear about tomorrow because I know who holds tomorrow in his hand and my trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ and I know that he said he will never leave me he will never forsake me he said I'll go with you to the end of the world he'll do the same for you we'll see you next time bye bye for today